Dr. Cutty. Do, do you remember him at all? Mm -hmm. do, you, do, do you have any memory of Ethan C.? No. Well, well, he was a superb preacher, and I liked to go when he was preaching. <clears throat> and uh, not to say the others weren't okay, but as a growing, I was boy, 15, 16. And I began to think about ordination. And it was when I saw him preside at the late communion service one Sunday in procession wearing the white chasuble in the heat of the summer that I said to myself, I can do that. So that was something that I forgot about it. And then it came back up again with Howard Davis and I began to be deliberate in trying to prepare myself for seminary. My, my relationship with St. Paul's existed through the years. And when uh, Harold left, uh, there was someone who said, someone said, uh, well, take a look at Jim Carroll. He, he came out of St. Paul's, he's a rector in Long Beach. And Mike Gonzalez said, well, we don't need a young, we need an experienced clergyman and so on. So that's when the, the canon of the cathedral, um, what's his name, he became rector. You were rector about four years, weren't you, or five years or something, and then became dean? I was rector by title, 78 to 85, so all, all oh, okay. six and a half years. Okay. And um, we were functioning as a cathedral de jure, but not de facto. And then we went into the uh, <coughs> process very carefully. We appointed the Bishop Morton appointed a, a committee from the diocese and from the parish to meet um, quarterly or so to a ask what we're trying to build in the cathedral image. It was carefully done. We changed our Articles of Incorporation in Sacramento, so we were genuinely, mm -hmm. most cathedrals, as you know, in the United States and our American parish churches are elevated, uh, uh, but uh, St. Paul's is a little different, it was reincorporated. And uh, back to being called here, and I expressed an interest when it was vacant again, I'm trying to remember who was rector, and it wasn't workable. And then Bob Walterstorff called me. Oh, he was at a meeting in Chicago, and Bob was on the board of trustees of Seabury Western, and the parish was vacant again, and that's when George Ross was hankering after it. Right, and okay. It had not been offered. And okay. Bob said, would you be interested? I said, no, I've only been here a couple of years. I can't just run back to San mm -hmm. Diego. And then and the next time, in 1978, when George left, he was only rector for four years and went mm -hmm. off to Japan or where. And he was a good friend. He, he was at Seabury Western when mm -hmm. I was. Then it, something clicked. But there was a reason to leave Chicago and go back home. Some people say you cannot go home. And I said, oh, yes, you can if it works. So. Well, you've been six or seven years at St. James, haven't you? Yeah, yeah six and a half years. Oh, okay. I, had to, I, I could have stayed there till retirement. I sure. I sure. loved Chicago. I loved yeah. my bishop, Jim Montgomery. Yeah. And uh, different, uh, the mystery of vocation is understood by human relationships, families, where they are. I knew that my oldest son was going to be in college in the West. He would have applied to two or three. There would have been a good reason to move west. I had been up for a bishop in Northern California in 1977, and I was elected by the laity, and the clergy didn't go along because they did not like Clarence Hayden, their bishop, who obviously was favoring me.
so I didn't get Northern California, which is just as well. I'd rather live in San Diego than Sacramento. And uh, if I could have told some of this story to the electing body here, they might have elected me, but I didn't. I was just a candidate like others, but mm -hmm. the election here was was flawed by uh, alcohol, people drinking between ballots. We went for 22 ballots and called, called a postponement for the following Saturday when another 22 allowed the sheer exhaustion and Brinkley was elected. I had been elected by the clergy here first time, but they, 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 I remember were, that. they were just playing games. Oh. And so I have a love relationship and a troubled relationship with my life here. But once I became rector, <coughs> I have felt that a new thrust was given to me. I was the oldest rector they had ever elected. I was 49 or 50. And Harold was young. Yeah. Rankin Barnes was young. Yes. Was young. All these guys. Canon Barnes's father was rector. He, they were all in their thirties and forties. It was interesting. So that must have been a, a divine plan to prepare me for where I am now. To elect an old man of forty-nine. At forty-nine. <laughs> oh, I remember my fiftieth birthday was a big deal here. They had had a rector who was fifty because they went elsewhere. <laughs> so this is from our first walk through the doors at Eighth and C to my final official walk out the door in nineteen ninety four. It's been up and down the the most rewarding parish I've ever served and the most troubling parish I've served. Mm-hmm.